and take three cadets from the first alpha company. In the fall of 1982, the Aztec program gained host school status. The Army's Institute of Health will also approve our soldiers sleep insignia, the state unit insignia, and seal for the institutional flag. In that same year, the program established the cadet program structure, the first Ranger Challenge Club, and began performing color guard activities. It is our honor to acknowledge Glenn Perkins and Frank Elizondo, who launched the Army ROTC program in 1980 and commissioned the first class in 1982. Joining them in the audience today, Colors, the National Anthem, the Coast Guard Flyover, commanded by Lieutenant Liam Otto, and the Invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the back center. We now present to you your spring 2022 commissionees from the Aztec Army ROTC program. The Aztec Army ROTC Battalion Color Guard will now present the colors.
by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last evening, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glow the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner get waved? For the land of the free and the home of the Please welcome our priest, Father McGivern, to conduct our invocation. Let us pray. Loving God, Spirit of life, Creator, and source of boundless compassion, Thank you for bringing us to this wonderful and important moment as we celebrate the accomplishments of those who will soon be officially commissioned for future responsibilities as our nation's newest Army Second Lieutenants. Our hearts are filled with thanks and joyful gratitude for them. We are also truly grateful for the faith, commitment, learning, goodness and kindness of so many others who have helped them to this moment so well prepared to publicly swear their allegiance to serve our country and make the world a safer place. We are grateful for parents, siblings, grandparents, aunts, uncles and other family members and friends who have supported them to this day of accomplishment and celebration. Thank you for the hard work of faculty, staff, administrators, cadres at San Diego State University, the University of San Diego, Point Loma Nazarene University, California State University, San Marcos, and the University of California, San Diego. May they enjoy joy and fulfillment for all their hard work in guiding and supporting our Army or OTC students to this day. The selflessness of our newly commissioned to be is an inspiration to us all. Protect them, bless them, and guide them, and may they always know our appreciation for the sacrifices they make to serve our country and defend our freedoms. May all of us gathered today remember that to those whom much is given, much is expected. So it's with a keen spirit of hope and gratitude 
we humbly make our prayer in your many holy names. Amen. At this time, we invite all military personnel and veterans to remain standing for the Soldier's Creed. All others may be seated. Commissioning Cadet and Charlie Company Commander Ryan Hashimoto will now recite the Soldier's Creed. Soldier's Creed! I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior member of peace. I serve the people of the United States and live beyond the value. I always place the mission first. I'll never accept the peace. I'll never quit. I'll never leave the fall, comrades. I am disciplined, physically, mentally tough, trained and proficient my warrior talents and skills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert and honor professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemy of the United States of America in close combat. I am guarding freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. Please be seated. We would now like to extend a special welcome to our distinguished guests in the audience. Brigadier General Retired Dean Malaris and Mrs. Malaris. Mrs. Janet Chin. Captain Jerry Olin. Captain Retired Russ Thompson and Mrs. Thompson. Colonel Retired, Joe Biscacci and Mrs. Biscacci. Colonel Retired, Wes Sherman. Commander Retired, Ted Parsons. Chief Retired, Jack Kane. Lieutenant Colonel Retired, Kirby Scarborough. Chief Warrant Officer 4, retired, Manny Ortiz. Chief Warrant Officer 5, retired, Jenny Werner. Father David Valentini. Sergeant First Class, retired, Angel Martinez. Dr. Heather Canary. And Miss Eliza East. We would also like to welcome those joining us virtually on Facebook today. I would now like to introduce our Professor of Military Science, Lieutenant Colonel Michelle Parlett. Um, this has been three years in the making to get him here. 
Um, and as an Aztec Army ROTC alum, he took the time out of his extremely busy schedule to travel across the world through multiple flight delays. <laughs> Hasn't slept in about 35 hours. Um, but to be here today to offer some words of wisdom to our commissioning, so thank you, sir. takes on a very joint feeling with our keynote speaker, Lieutenant General PDA, the Allied NATO Allied Land Commander, our Coast Guard flyover, former Navy bagpiper, guests first salutes of kinners from family and friends who served in our system services, all conducted aboard this beautiful and historic naval vessel, the USS Midway, on the 80th anniversary today of the attack of that battle at the Battle of Midway. We can all understand and appreciate our United States military and the release of this between the services. At this time, would all current military members and veterans please stand to recognize? Out of the office. Thank you so much for your service. To say I'm proud of this particular group of commissionees is an understatement. As they, and many of you, know, I love to brag on our amazing cadets. And this group of commissionees is no exception. Hopefully you don't mind, but I'm going to brag a little bit. So this was the first group in ROTC history who did not have a group of senior cadets to mentor them on the rigors and expectations of the advanced camp during their junior year because the camp, the camp was canceled for the commissioning class of 2021 due to COVID. This commissioning class went through their entire senior, or excuse me, junior year, the most intense year of their time in ROTC, almost entirely online. They can tell you just how fun and how effective Zoom physical training <laughs> and leading, leading platoon tactics virtually really is. Not so much. Despite these hardships, not only did 100% of the commissioning cadets pass advanced camp last summer at Fort Knox, the four achieved recondo status, meaning they exceeded core standards and are amongst only a select number who achieved this honor from across the nation each year. Nearly 60% of the Aztec cadets scored in the top third of their platoon at camp, with five scoring in the top 15%. I am beyond impressed by their performance, which is a testament to their dedication, hard work, and resilience. I also want to highlight four notable endeavors that cadets from this commissioning class achieved. For the first time in at least five years, Cadet Hashimoto reinvigorated the Joint Commander's Cup, a series of athletic competitions against our sister service ROTC programs that ran throughout the entire academic year. Although we won't talk about the final results and which service ultimately received that perpetual trophy for 2022, Cadet Hashimoto is leaving a lasting legacy on the program that will encourage friendly competition and sister service camaraderie with our fellow ROTC programs for years to come. Following the attack in Kabul, Afghanistan on August 26, 2021, and the loss of 13 service members, many of whom were stationed in the greater San Diego area and of the same age as our cadets, Cadet Boiza and some of his fellow cadets felt compelled to honor them. Without any cadre assistance, they spent weeks planning and then completing a 13-mile rocket silver strand, one mile for each of those lost service members. Incorporating cadets and midshipmen from our sister service ROTC programs, veterans, and even the general public. It was a huge endeavor logistically, but they made it happen because it was the right thing to do. Just last month, Two of our senior cadets traveled up to Los Angeles for multiple days of physical and military skills events in order to earn their German Armed Forces Proficiency Badge, and they're wearing those today. This was an event sponsored by the University of Southern California's Army ROTC. Both Cadet Hallmark and Cadet Sandra Torres earned their badge at the Gold Standard, which is the highest level of proficiency offered. Last but not least, Amongst the groups sitting before you are five seniors who made program history this year. Advancing the Ranger Challenge team through task force and, and brigade level victories, destroying the competition at nearly every physically grueling event. Cadets Hallmark, Nikolov, Adams, Garland, and Andrews took the team all the way to Sandhurst International Service Academy 
an ROTC military skills competition at West Point, New York, for the first time in Aztec Battalion history. When these gentlemen signed up for Ranger Challenge back in September, they anticipated early morning PT from September to early November, a mere two months of physical exertion, effort, and motivation. Instead, they kept winning at every level of competition. In the end, they conducted intensive physical training five days a week for eight months during the school year and maintained very good grades while doing so. This was PT that even crushed the souls of our seasoned infantry and ranger cadre. <laughs> this paid off with an extremely respectable finish at Sandhurst, placing the top four of non-senior service college ROTC programs in the nation. There's 273 of those, number four. Really incredible. like our Ranger Challenge captains and team members, including any underclass teammates who are in the audience today, to please stand and be recognized for this outstanding achievement and for making history this year. I truly look forward to serving with you and keeping in touch and celebrating all of your future accomplishments. For each of you, I know there's a level of nervousness and uncertainty as you enter this new chapter in your life, and that is perfectly normal. You will feel it with every new promotion and every new position you hold. You might be feeling uneasy and think you don't know enough to be entrusted to take on this incredible responsibility of serving as an Army officer, but you do know enough. You worked hard and you are head and shoulders above your peers, as you will see at Bullock and Beyond. Trust in what you've learned from your fellow cadets, those who put commission before you and your Aztec cadre. Trust in your abilities and your level of competence. You know what you're supposed to know at this level in your future career. You've already distinguished yourselves from other civilians and your classmates by making up less than 1% of society in the commissions. Be confident in yourself. Trust your MCOs, their experience and their wisdom. They are the backbone of the Army. Never stop asking questions, never stop learning, and seeking out opportunities to develop yourself and others. Do what you are trained to do. Go out there and lead in this great profession. On behalf of all the Aztec Battalion cadre, thank you for setting the example, thank you for your hard work, and thank you for leading the program better than when you joined it. All things that we also ask of you as an Army officer. You will undoubtedly excel at your future pro profession as a future second lieutenant. Welcome to the Army profession. Congratulations, Commissioning Class of 2022. Today, we have the distinct privilege of introducing our very special guest speaker, Lieutenant General Roger Cloutier, Jr. Lieutenant General Cloutier agreed to travel great distances from Izmir, Turkey to San Diego in order to meet, talk with, commission, and shake the hands of each one of our commissionees, something he has been looking forward to since the summer of 2019. His willingness to travel across the world to welcome our newly commissioned lieutenants into the Army is special in itself. With COVID travel restrictions lifted and a sliver of white space on his calendar, Lieutenant General Cloutier enthusiastically agreed to provide some words of wisdom to our commissionees. Aside from being the current commander of NATO's Allied Land Command, he is a proud product of our very own Aztec Army ROTC program. His resume is long and impressive and it all began as a cadet at the University of San Diego. Lieutenant General Cloutier served as a cadet and a political science student at USD and in 1988, commissioned as a second lieutenant into the infantry. Lieutenant General Cloutier has since earned his master's degree in international relations and served in every level of command from company to brigade and installation. In addition to multiple high level staff jobs, Major General Cloutier served as brigade commander in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation New Dawn, as a battalion commander in Operation Iraqi Freedom, as a company commander in Operation Joint Endeavor, and as a scout platoon leader in Operation Just Cause. Before assuming his current position, Lieutenant General Cloutier served as the commander of U.S. Army African, Africa Southern European Task Force, an undoubtedly challenging and complex role, especially when the global pandemic complicated his mission further. 
As the Army component to AFRICOM, Lieutenant General Cloutier's area of responsibility spanned 53 countries, which when combined, covered an area three times the size of the United States. Representation within his area of responsibility included 800 ethnic groups with over a thousand languages spoken. Just given these few facts, anyone can deduce that his mission was incredibly complex, but the Army obviously picked the right general officer for the job in selecting a former Aztec. His accomplishments at the U.S. Army Africa CTAF commander and several other high-level positions throughout his career led to his selection as the commander of NATO's Allied Land Command, where he is responsible for the theater land component and advocate responsible for coordinating and synchronizing NATO and partner land forces by enabling land domain readiness, interoperability, standardization, and competency. All of this while working with a bench of diverse leaders from all around the world working together under the NATO flag in a united effort for collective defense, preservation, and security. We are extremely proud to call someone of his caliber with such a su successful and distinctive career an alum of our program. Once an Aztec, always an Aztec. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant General Roger L. Cloutier, Jr. Thank you for that uh, really kind and humbling introduction. Um, that just means I've been in the Army a long time, uh, 34 years. Uh, it, it's, it's a feeling of mixed emotions to be back here in San Diego. I have not been back here in a long, long time. And to come back and have the honor and privilege to be uh, the commissioning officer for um, a class of new lieutenants going off to the Army is a highlight for me. And I want you to know how incredibly honored I am to be here. And as I stand here, believe it or not, I'm looking, I think Seaport Village is right over there, right? Is that true? There's a bench over there that 34 years ago I proposed to my bride on that I've been tasked to get a picture of before I leave. And I have to make sure I get that. So General Malaris, Captain Olin, Captain Lennard, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, faculty and cadre, lieutenants or cadets soon be lieutenants. It's really an honor to be here. It's been quite an arduous journey. I think the flight was supposed to take a total of 17 hours. Uh, it took us, I don't know, three days to get here. Uh, it was absolutely a mess, but I'm glad we were able to get in late last night uh, so that we could be here. Uh, Michelle, you already recognize families and veterans, but I think it's important enough it's, that we do it again. Uh, and I want to recognize both groups up front. Families first. Parents, siblings, children, husbands, wives, whatever that relationship may be, behind every good soldier is a great family. I know this from personal experience because I would not absolutely be where I am today without the love and support of my wife and my family. So please, another round of applause for all of our families. do it again because as I look out into the audience I see so many veterans out there uh, and if you're a veteran who has served in any of the branches at any time would you please stand again because we want to honor you one more time. Stand up with pride. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you for your service and your sacrifice. My wife and children sleep safe in their beds at night because of men and women like you who raised your right hand and said, I will stand in the gap for freedom. I will stand to defend this idea we call America. So thank you very much. My name is Roger Cloutier. I am a soldier in the United States Army. I am the son of a United States Airman. I am the husband of a soldier. I am the brother of a soldier and I am the father of two soldiers. My family and I are fully invested and committed to the defense of our great nation, our nation, the United States of America. And it is an obligation that I received in my commissioning more than 30 years ago. And it's an obligation that I pass on to you today. I really appreciate the invitation to speak here today. And again, I wanna welcome all of our distinguished guests each of you has contributed to the development of these soon-to-be lieutenants. 
My congratulations to Lieutenant Colonel Parlett and her entire team. Michelle, great job. I know you're extremely proud of this graduating class of officers. And frankly, there is no greater honor or responsibility than shaping the next generation of Army leaders. And our Army ROTC programs across the nation are vital to our Army. In fact, the majority of officers that enter the United States Army come from the Reserve Officer Training Corps. For the graduating cadets of the Aztec Battalion, congratulations on all that you have accomplished and achieved. Today we will watch 15 of you take the oath of office. You enter branches including armor, aviation, explosive ordnance disposal, infantry, field artillery, military intelligence, quartermaster, signal corps, and transportation. You've demonstrated commitment and dedication, and this will serve you well in the years ahead. And I still feel pride remembering my own commissioning ceremony from the Aztec Battalion way back in 1988. I have great memories of my time there, and you're gonna remember your times here and have those same, um, same great memories. In fact, I was looking through my drawer the other day, and I found my old Aztec ROTC t-shirt, believe it or not. It's still a little tighter than it used to, but I still have it. My uh, APMS was uh, Major Mike Kirshner. Uh, he was a ranger and a special forces uh, soldier, and he shaped my desire to be an infantryman. And I remember honing my skills during our FTXs at Camp Pendleton, doing rubber boat training at Coronado with the SEALs. Also, Ranger Challenge, uh, Michelle, but uh, we did not do as well as your team did. Um, job well done, and congratulations for placing so high at uh, Sandhurst. And then we used to call it Army Navy Day where we would uh, bring everybody together and we'd beat up on the Navy and the Marine Corps and the Air Force. Uh, the year that I was a senior, we won. I really don't know if we won, but there's nobody here that was there. But we <laughs> I can say we won. Um, but uh, I have to say this, my, my very best memory, however, is that I met my bride, Diane, uh, in this battalion. She was a cadet, um, and we had a dining in. Have you guys done a dining in, Chef? 2019, so we had a dining in and I knew the S1, the battalion personnel officer, uh, and I looked at the seating chart and I went to her and I said, hey, can you move her next to me? And I moved her, her name around the table and she ended up sitting next to me and the rest is history and 34 uh, years later, I'm still blessed to call her my bride. Uh, so that is really my, my very, very best memory. I also remember all my great friends. We shared many, many memories over the years and I believe that I'm probably the, the last one still on active duty today. But today is a day to celebrate. It's a day to celebrate your graduation. It's a day to celebrate your graduation. It's a day to celebrate the closing of one chapter of your lives while simultaneously beginning the next. So, congratulations. Now, family members, please forgive me because I'm going to speak to your cadets as second lieutenants and officers and leaders in the United States Army. So as I prepared for this speech, I reflected on what I learned since commissioning more than three decades ago. I wanna first share five lessons with you. These are my personal lessons, but they have carried true for me for 34 years in peacetime and in combat. These five lessons are God, family, integrity, positive mental attitude, and what I call the big four. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to begin with God. Mark chapter 8, verse 36 says, For what profit a man if he shall gain the whole world with all its pleasures and forfeit his soul? As you enter the army, your faith will be challenged. You're going to see things that are going to cause you to question. Hold on to your faith, whichever, whatever it is, no matter what. Keep God first in your life. And this has not always been the case for me. And I want you to learn from my mistakes, but I can tell you unequivocally today that my priorities are God, my family, and my country in that order. That is lesson number one. Number two, family and those we love. Many of you are joined today by family and friends who have been part of your journey to becoming second lieutenants in the United States Army. And you've asked some of them to pin your bars on uh, here today. Do not lose sight of the importance of these relationships as you begin your military careers. 
take care of those who matter most. Don't be one of those individuals who achieve greatness in their military career, but has no one standing beside them when it all comes to an end. You have to find a balance between your professional and personal lives, making time for those you love. That is lesson number two. Lesson number three, Brene Brown defines integrity as choosing courage over comfort, choosing what is right over what is fun or fast or easy, choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. You may find yourself in a position where your integrity will be put to the test. Do not compromise, ever. Small incremental compromises over time will cause serious damage to you, the ones you love, and to our army. That is lesson number three. Lesson number four, a positive attitude is a combat multiplier. When I was a company commander heading into Bosnia in 1995, there was an engineer unit that had to build two bridges over the Sava River. Some of you out there in the audience might remember that. It was an incredibly challenging task. There was actually two rivers. It was fast flowing. There were huge chunks of ice in the river. There had been flooding, equipment had been damaged. And I was a company commander and I rolled up with my Bradley company. I went in this tent and there were engineers there and the engineer commander was standing in front of his unit. And he told them, if there is anybody in this tent tonight who thinks we cannot get this bridge in, then leave now. Because when the sun comes up tomorrow morning, that bridge will be there. And through positive mental attitude, sheer determination, and a refusal to quit, those engineers got those bridges in. And when the sun came up the next morning, my company crossed those bridges into Bosnia. Lesson number four, a positive mental attitude is a combat multiplier. Number five, remember the big four, physical fitness. You can't just show up and be physically fit. It is built over time. It takes effort. You have to do it every day. I had a friend who was in Mogadishu, Somalia, who had to run the Mogadishu mile to get out of there. It was too late then if you were not physically fit. You have to do it now before you get on the plane. Marksmanship, the ability to hit what you shoot at with your weapon system. I don't care if it's a rifle, a pistol, a tank, a Bradley, an artillery piece. You must be able to hit what you shoot at. Marksmanship for you and your soldiers is important. Battle drills. I told uh, the cadets back uh, in, in the meeting room that their job as lieutenants is to call the drill. I was a collegiate wrestler, and the higher up you get in wrestling, the more basic uh, your wrestling becomes. And you can do it on anyone because you drill it a million times. So whether it's react to contact, whether it's maintenance, whether it's awards, whether it's counseling, your job is to make sure your units are drilled and capable of executing. And then the last one is medical training. Include medical training in everything you do. When I was a second lieutenant, uh, it came home to roost in my platoon. We were not as prepared as we should have been. And I never forgot that lesson. Include medical training in everything you do. Here very soon, you will be leading soldiers in the world's greatest army. And make no mistake, the United States Army is the greatest army in the world. No enemy can stand in the face of an American soldier. And leading our soldiers is a sacred obligation. A little over a year after arriving at my first assignment as a scout platoon leader in the 1st Battalion, 9th Regiment of the 7th Infantry Division Light, I deployed to Panama in support of Operation Just Cause. And it was December of 1989. One of my soldiers was Specialist, excuse me, I'm sorry, a Specialist Douglas J. Duff from Elgin, Nebraska. He was a down-to-earth, good-natured, Midwestern kid. He was just a little younger than me. I was 22 and he was 20. He died of a gunshot wound on New Year's Day. His death was tragic. Specialist Duff was a great soldier. He was a great American and he gave everything in defense of our nation. 
specialist Duff's death, which I still think about 30 years later, reminds me of the moral obligation I undertook when I took my oath of office and what it really means to lead American soldiers. Command Sergeant Major in the Army Grinston says, things don't fix things. People and soldiers fix things. Take care of your people and the things will get fixed. And our soldiers will go into a cave, they'll go down a dark alley, they'll go into a defended building, all while knowing the enemy is there, as long as they know and they believe that their chain of command has done everything possible for them to get ready and that their chain of command, you, their lieutenants, have given them their very best. We owe our soldiers our very best. Let no soldier ever cry from the grave. If only I had been trained. If only my leaders cared enough about me to train me. Specialist Duff's death fundamentally changed me. It changed the way I approach training and preparing soldiers. And it's our duty to ensure that our soldiers are trained, equipped, and ready to execute their assigned missions. You're gonna need to take care of their physical, their emotional, their mental, and their spiritual well-being. You need to be willing to train your soldiers until their knees buckle and to care enough about them to make sure they do it right. I often say that you can issue a lot of things as you're getting on the plane. You can issue ammunition, you can issue equipment, you can issue meals ready to eat, but there are four things you cannot issue plane side. And that's discipline, that's training, that's physical fitness, and that's trust. And those four things are developed early in the morning. They're developed in the rain. They're developed in the dead of night when no one else is looking. Now I say this not only as a professional officer, but as the father of two soldiers who you could possibly serve alongside or lead one day. Train my soldiers hard. Have the intestinal fortitude to make sure that it's done to standard. And then make sure my soldiers have everything they need to deploy, to fight, to win, and to come back home. When I joined the United States Army, it was a very different military, a very different world. The Cold World was ending, the Cold War was ending. The last major conflict was the Vietnam War, which had been over for more than a decade. And the Army was adapting to a new deployable mindset. Today, you all joined a military that has been at war for over 20 years. A military that is fighting in new domains like cyber and space and seeing the resurgence of great power competition. Additionally, we're coming out of a global pandemic and we are bearing witness to Russia's unjustified and unprovoked aggression against Ukraine. A war which has unleashed devastation the likes of which we have not seen since World War II. So the threats you face during your military careers will evolve and change. Of this I'm certain. And Army General Mark Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who like you, earned his commissioning through Army ROTC, spoke at an Air Force Academy's graduation a few years ago, and he said, the character, and I quote, the character of war is undergoing fundamental change, and that our newest officers will serve the nation in a time of incredible challenge and increased complexity uh, is undoubted. We may not know exactly what the next crisis or emergency will be, but there's gonna be one. And as I often say, the call will come in the middle of the night in the pouring rain during a long weekend, and you have to be ready. I know that this is an Army ROTC commissioning ceremony, but we're in a Navy town and we're on a Navy ship, Captain, right? It's in the ship, right? Someone, I worked for an admiral once and he said, it's a boat under 100 feet, it's a ship over 100 feet, is that true? Close enough, it's a ship, right? Okay, cool. Um, so, I hope uh, you'll allow me to share a, a story that's posted on the Brooklyn's website. It's about a naval officer uh, who has been a source of inspiration to me for many years. His name was Mike Christian, and he served with Senator John McCain during the Vietnam War. Senator McCain was a naval aviator during the Vietnam War, and he spent five and a half years as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam. One of his cellmates was Mike Christian, who was from Selma, Alabama. Now, 
And Mike didn't wear shoes until he was 13 years old. After high school, Mike enlisted in the Navy. He went to Officer Canada School. He earned his commission and he earned his aviation wing. Mike was assigned to combat duty and was shot down over North Vietnam in 1967 and taken prisoner. At a certain point in the imprisonment, Senator McCain and Mike Christian were housed together with 30 to 40 other POWs in a large room in a prison called the Hanoi Hilton. Red Cross packages were permitted at the time, and as each new package arrived, Mike would sort through the contents, searching for bits and pieces of red, white, and blue cloth. Using a makeshift bamboo needle, he collected the bits of fabric in Mike's shirt, and they confiscated it. They drug Mike from the cell, and they beat him unmercifully for the next several hours. Back in the cell, his fellow prisoners could hear the media impact of the blows landing on Mike's body, followed by his screams. When the guards threw Mike back into the cell, his eyes were swollen shut, his mouth was cut and bleeding, his hands and feet were broken, his entire body was black and blue. His fellow prisoners cleaned Mike up the best they could, and they laid him down on the cold concrete floor, and he remained unconscious for several hours. As soon as Mike gained consciousness, he began to move around with Senator McCain shared how this moment brought tears to his eyes, but it brought courage to his heart. The courage that was instrumental in helping him survive five and a half years of torture and captivity. Despite being nearly beaten to death with broken fingers that were almost useless and swollen eyes that he could barely see out of. Mike Christian had picked up his bamboo needle was quietly sewing another American flag. I often think about Mike Christian when I hear the national anthem and I stand before our American flag. I think about those U.S. service members in that prison cell in Hanoi. I think about our current soldiers deployed in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, or the Pacific, separated from America and everyone they love, defending our freedom in the dead of night when no one else is watching. Their daily practice of saying the Pledge of Allegiance was the most important thing they did. It affirmed their commitment to being American service members, to their code of conduct, to their charge, to keep the faith, to never give up. Think about this story today as you prepare to say your oath of office in front of that same American flag that powerful symbol of our nation. In Isaiah 6, it said, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, Lord. Send me. When your country called and said, Whom shall I send? You said, Here I am. Send me. I will be that messenger. You raise your right hand to stand in the gaps of freedom. And as I said before, to defend this idea we call America. And those of us who have gone before now pass on the mantle of responsibility to you. My wife and I, when I'm back on my farm driving my tractor around, will sleep safe in our bed tonight because you have chosen to serve. It's an honorable path, but it's not an easy one. You will be stretched in ways that you can only imagine now. You will be tested. You will have times when you think there's no way we can accomplish this mission. But you know what? You will. You'll figure out a way, and you'll figure out a way because you are American soldiers. But you're not gonna do it alone. You're gonna have a team. And your role as the leader of that team will be to lead them, to train them, to love them, and then to empower them to get after the mission. You are among the less than 1% of our nation's citizens who choose to serve in uniform, wearing our nation's flag on your right shoulder. And you are joining a long and very proud tradition of selfless service. As you pin on those gold bars and say the oath of office, a sacred obligation gets passed on to you obligation to defend America. 
as you begin your military careers. I hope you will remember my first five points. First, keep God first always. Second, take care of those you love. Third, integrity. Never compromise, ever. Four, positive attitude is a combat multiplier. And five, remember the big four when you're getting your soldiers ready to deploy, fight, and win. Class of 2022, Lieutenants of the Aztec Battalion, you are the future of our Army, and I am trusting that you will lead it well. Thank you for the commitment you're making today and to the obligation that you are accepting. Thank you for your service to our nation and for everything you will do for our great country. And I look forward to serving alongside each and every one of you as we continue this journey. So congratulations to all of you. Congratulations, family members. God bless you all. God bless America. The name's Cloutier, and I am an American soldier. On behalf of the Aztec Army ROTC program, Cadet Hallmark will now present Lieutenant General Cloutier with a token of our appreciation on behalf of the commissioning class of 2022 for his continued support of our program, service, leadership, and exemplary words of wisdom. We will now begin the commissioning portion of this morning's ceremony. Second lieutenants take an oath of office, solidifying their commitment to the Army and the responsibilities inherent to their new rank. Afterwards, the commissionees will officially be pinned with the second lieutenant bars by selected family and friends and render their first salute as commissioned officers. Today's commissionees will now take their oath of office. Those who have not officially graduated from their respective university yet will take their oath separately upon degree conferral at the end of the month. The oath of office found in your program is the written basis for the code of the military officer. It is executed by each officer upon receipt of their commission. Commissionees, by accepting an officer's commission in the armed forces of the United States, you become an official of the United States government and are expected to do your utmost to uphold and defend the American way of life. You are embarking upon a life of public service during which our nation's leaders and citizens expect you to discharge all assigned duties in an exemplary manner, to represent our great country with dignity, and to maintain the highest degree of integrity and personal honor. Lieutenant General Cloutier will now administer the oath. Commissioning Class of 2022, on your feet.
We will now continue the ceremony with the pinning of the gold bars, the insignia of a second lieutenant, and the first salute. The first salute is a tradition in our army that newly commissioned second lieutenants present a silver dollar to the first non-commissioned officer who salutes them. The coin symbolically acknowledges the receipt of respect due to the new rank and position. The origins of the tradition are unknown, but date back to the 19th century. Some hold that the tradition even comes from the British during the colonial period. Congress authorized the silver dollar on 2 April 1792. It is traditionally the only coin given in exchange for the first salute. Commissionees often go to great lengths to secure an appropriate coin. Each new second lieutenant has asked a certain active duty, reserve, National Guard, or previously serving non-commissioned officer who is particularly important to them to render that salute. Following the first salute, Lieutenant General Cloutier and Lieutenant Colonel Parlette will present our newly commissioned officers their official commissioning certificate signed by the Acting Secretary of the Army, the Aztec Battalion Coin of Excellence, certificates of recognition from the State of California provided by the Civilian Aid to the Secretary of the Army, Ms. Janet Chin, and gold Second Lieutenant Bars, generously donated by USAA. Ladies and gentlemen, please save all personal pictures until the end of the ceremony as we have a professional phot photographer present. Pinners and first salute personnel, please make your way to the front and stand with your commissionee once their name is called. Our first commissionee today is Joshua Adams. Second Lieutenant Joshua Adams is a graduate of the University of San Diego. He branched military intelligence with infantry branch detail and will report to Fort Benning, Georgia for the infantry basic officer leader course and ranger school. Second Lieutenant Adams will receive his bars from his mother, Claire Adams, and father, Colonel Retired Arthur Adams. Second Lieutenant Adams' first salute will be rendered by Sergeant First Class Retired Angel Martinez. Our next commissionee is Jonah Andrews. Second Lieutenant Jonah Andrews is a graduate of Point Loma Nazarene University. He branched field artillery and will report to Fort Sill, Oklahoma for the field artillery basic officer leader course. Second Lieutenant Andrews will receive his bars from parents Steve and Elizabeth Andrews and wife Maddie Andrews. Second Lieutenant Andrews' first salute will be rendered by Sergeant Retired Sam Wick. Our next commissionee is Priscilla Garcia. Second Lieutenant Priscilla Garcia is a graduate of California State University, San Marcos. She branched quartermaster and will report to Fort Lee, Virginia for the quartermaster basic officer leader course. Second Lieutenant Garcia will receive her bars from her mother, Claudia Alfaro, sister, Gabby Perez, and her husband, Anthony Garcia.
Second Lieutenant Garcia's first salute will be rendered by Sergeant Jerry Castellanos. Our next commissionee is Jack Garland. Second Lieutenant Jack Garland is a graduate of Point Loma Nazarene University. He branched infantry and will report to Fort Benning, Georgia for the Infantry Basic Officer Leader Course and Ranger School. Second Lieutenant Garland will receive his bars from his parents, Stacy and John Garland. Second Lieutenant Garland's first salute will be rendered by Specialist 5, Dan Modulin. Our next commissionee is Jonathan Hallmark. Second Lieutenant Jonathan Hallmark is a graduate of San Diego State University. He branched infantry and will report to Fort Benning, Georgia for the Infantry Basic Officer Leader Course and Ranger School. Second Lieutenant Hallmark will receive his bars from his parents Alejandra and Paul Hallmark. Second Lieutenant Hallmark's first salute will be rendered by Sergeant First Class Retired Angel Martinez. Our next commissionee today is Ryan Hashimoto. Second Lieutenant Ryan Hashimoto is a graduate of California State University, San Marcos. He branched field artillery and will report to Fort Sill, Oklahoma for the field artillery basic officer leader course. Second Lieutenant Hashimoto will receive his bars from his parents, Yo and Wes Hashimoto and fiance, Serena Noma.
Second Lieutenant Hashimoto's first salute will be rendered by Sergeant First Class Retired Angel Martinez. Our next commissionee is Colton Leonard. Second Lieutenant Colton Leonard is a graduate of Point Loma Nazarene University. He branched Air Defense Artillery and will report to Fort Sill, Oklahoma for the Air Defense Artillery Basic Officer Leader Course. Second Lieutenant Leonard will receive his bars from his parents, Tamara and Captain Retired Trent Leonard and Colonel Retired Rod Leonard. Second Lieutenant Leonard's first salute will be rendered by Sergeant First Class Retired Angel Martinez. Second Lieutenant Ivan, our next commissioner today is Ivan Loiza. Second Lieutenant Ivan Loiza is a graduate of Point Loma Nazarene University. He branched ordnance, specialty explosive ordnance disposal, and a report to Fort Lee, Virginia for the ordnance basic officer leader course and the explosive ordnance disposal course. Second Lieutenant Loiza will receive his bars from his parents Elizabeth and Renee, Renee Loiza and his wife Gabriella Loiza. Second Lieutenant Loiza's first salute will be rendered by Sergeant Darrell Bercy. Our next commissionee is Lucas Nikoloff. Second Lieutenant Lucas Nikoloff is a graduate of the University of San Diego. He branched infantry and will report to Fort Benning, Georgia for the Infantry Basic Officer Leader Course and Ranger School. Second Lieutenant Nikoloff will receive his bars from his parents Rhonda and Bill Nikoloff.
Second Lieutenant Nikoloff's first salute will be rendered by Specialist Retired William Nikoloff. Our next commissionee is Noel No. Second Lieutenant Noel No is a graduate of the University of California, San Diego. He branched Quartermaster Corps and will report to Fort Lee, Virginia for the Quartermaster Basic Officer Leader Course. Second Lieutenant No will receive his bars from his parents, Young Shin An and Gun Ho No. Second Lieutenant Noe's first salute will be rendered by Sergeant First Class Retired Angel Martinez. Our next commissionee is Kieran O'Brien. Second Lieutenant Kieran O'Brien is a graduate of the University of San Diego. He branched infantry and will report to Fort Benning, Georgia for the Infantry Basic Officer Leader Course and Ranger School. Second Lieutenant O'Brien will receive his bars from his mother, Victoria, his father, Sergeant Patrick O'Brien, and his fiance, Marissa Garcia. Second Lieutenant O'Brien's first salute will be rendered by Sergeant Patrick O'Brien. Our next commissionee is Naya Simone Porter. Second Lieutenant Naya Simone Porter is a graduate of San Diego State University. She branched Adjutant General Corps, Branch Detailed Armor, and will report to Fort Benning, Georgia for the Armor Basic Officer Leader Course. 
Second Lieutenant Porter will receive her bars from her mother, Nikki, and father, Sergeant First Class Retired, Richard Porter. Second Lieutenant Porter's first salute will be rendered by her father, Sergeant First Class Retired Richard Porter. Our next commissionee is Rafael San Victores. Second Lieutenant Rafael San Victores is a graduate of San Diego State University. He branched aviation and will report to Fort Rucker, Alabama for the Aviation Basic Officer Leader Course. Second Lieutenant San Victores will receive his bars from his parents, Marianne and Douglas San Victores. Second Lieutenant San Victoria's first salute will be rendered by Sergeant First Class Aaron McDevitt. Our next commissionee is Joseph Watson. Second Lieutenant Joseph Watson is a graduate of Point Loma Nazarene University. He's branch engineer, specialty explosive ordnance disposal, and a report to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri for the engineer basic officer leader course and Fort Lee, Virginia for the explosive ordnance disposal course. Second Lieutenant Watson will receive his bars from his grandmother Marlene Watson, father Rich Watson, and his wife Logan Watson. Second Lieutenant Watson's first salute will be rendered by Specialist Retired Raymond Watson.
Our final commissionee for today is Cameron Williams. Second Lieutenant Cameron Williams is a graduate of the University of San Diego. He's Branch Signal Corps and will report to Fort Gordon, Georgia for the Signal Basic Officer Leader Course and Cyber Transition Course. Second Lieutenant Williams will receive his bars from his father, Ronald Williams, his friend, Specialist Noah Brueger, and his girlfriend, Bailey Farmer. Second Lieutenant Williams, first salute will be rendered by Sergeant First Class Retired Angel Martinez. Please give all of these newly commissioned second lieutenants a round of applause. At this time, we would now like to introduce our distinguished military graduates. All five of these officers earn the title of distinguished military graduate for ranking in the top 20% of their peers nationally for superior performance and leadership excellence. Our distinguished military graduates are Second Lieutenant Joshua Adams, Second Lieutenant Jonah Andrews. Second Lieutenant Jack Garland. Second Lieutenant Jonathan Hallmark. and Second Lieutenant Rafael San Victores. Brigadier General Anthony Long, a former distinguished member of the Association of the United States Army and a strong supporter of our ROTC program since the beginning, has graciously provided an annual award of a saber to a graduating senior who will serve our country as a commissioned officer and who has demonstrated unique leadership abilities throughout the year. 
Additionally, an engraved nameplate will be added to the larger plaque in the headquarters office. Today, the recipient of the Brigadier General Anthony Long Saber is Second Lieutenant Rafael San Victorias. The National Defense Industrial Association has generously donated an Army Dress Saber to be presented to our most distinguished graduates. The U.S. Army Saber is a coveted award that is earned through hard work, sacrifice, and dedication. It is a truly prestigious award. The Saber is given to only the finest of cadets. Many compete, but only a few receive the honor. The first recipient of this year's National Defense Industrial Association Saber Award is Second Lieutenant Jack Garland. Second Lieutenant Garland began his studies in the fall of 2018 at Point Loma Nazarene University and received his Bachelor of Arts degree in Business Administration with a 3.5 grade point average, cum laude designation. He joined the Army ROTC program in the fall of 2018 and attended advance camp at Fort Knox, Kentucky in the summer of 2021. As a student, Second Lieutenant Garland was an avid member of the Aztec Battalion Ranger Challenge Team, which advanced to Sandhurst for the first time in program history. Second Lieutenant Garland ma maintained a 300 score on the Army Physical Fitness Test. He was also selected uh, as the George C. Marshall Award recipient, reserved for a top cadet in the program. During his time in ROTC, Second Lieutenant Garland held the positions of Cadet Battalion Commander and Public Affairs Officer. The second recipient of this year's National Defense Industrial Association Sabre Award is Second Lieutenant Jonathan Hallmark. <laughs> second Lieutenant Hallmark began his studies in the fall of 2018 at San Diego State University and received his Bachelor of Science degree in Finance. He joined the Army ROTC program in the fall of 2018 and attended advance camp at Fort Knox, Kentucky in the summer of 2021. As a student, Second Lieutenant Hallmark was an avid member of the Aztec Battalion Ranger Challenge Team, serving as team captain, and took the team to Sandhurst for the first time in program history. He was also an active participant in the Ski and Snowboard Club. Second Lieutenant Hallmark maintained a 300 score in the Army Physical Fitness Test and a 600 on his Army Combat Fitness Test. During his time in the ROTC program, he held positions of Cadet Battalion Commander and Alpha Company Commander. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the U.S. Army's newest officers. We present the commissioning class of 2022. Please remain standing for the benediction by Chaplain McGivern. So for our, our closing benediction, I ask all of you to extend your hands over our nation's newest Army Second Lieutenants. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for these, our newly commissioned officers. May faith in God's protection grant you courage. May your discipline and sacrifice inspire every citizen to use their freedom well. May God, who is for us, with us, and among us, 
bless you and sustain you in your allegiance to serve our country and to make the world a safer place. We humbly ask all of this in your many holy names. Amen. Please join us in singing the Army song. Words to the Army song are located on the back cover of your program. Please be seated. At this time, will all commissioned lieutenants and Aztec battalion cadre proceed to the red carpet and stage for a group photo with Lieutenant General Cloutier and the official party. This concludes our ceremony. Feel free to stay after as long as needed for individual photos with our commissionees, keynote speaker, and guests in front of our national colors or the San Diego Bay. On behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Parlett, the Aztec Battalion Cadre, and the newest Army officers, we thank you for taking part in this very special event. May God bless you, the United States Army, and the United States of America.
better pay me good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>